Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Rafe Mayer, former B.C. cabinet minister and Canada's longest-running number one radio talk show host and the most prominent political commentator in Lions Bay, B.C. Happy New Year, Rafe. Well, Happy New Year to you, Jim. Nice to talk to you again. Rafe, uh, I know we're, we're still quite a ways from a, an election in B.C. in 2017, at least a scheduled election, but so far... I have never seen a more invisible provincial government and loyal opposition ever in my life. The the, the amount of silence out of both offices is amazing. Well, I think a a lot of that's got to do with the opposition, Jim, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Governments just want as much silence as they possibly can. Uh, Usually news that comes out as bad news, even good news they claim is, is distorted into bad news. So they would just as soon not have any. That's why they release their stories on Friday afternoon. The opposition, on the other hand, usually wants to stay front and center and all kinds of stories out, uh, put their own people up to their best advantage and so on. And, and this, I think, is worth us talking about for a second. Uh, I'll tell you why that isn't happening. It's because John Horgan does not understand what opposition is all about. Now, I know I sound like a broken record on this, but I've got to say it again. Lord Randolph Churchill in the 1880s said it is the duty of the opposition to oppose, and Horgan doesn't understand that. He told me privately, and he's told everybody who will listen, uh, that they just can't be uh, opposed to everything. My question is, why not? And I'll tell you the why not part. It's not that the opposition has to actually be against everything. It's they have to be from Missouri on everything. They have to question everything. That's the only way you can be sure that you're getting the full truth out of the government, and it's the only way you can be sure to expose mistakes and unintended consequences and so on. And to give you an example, supposing the government were to announce a half a million dollars, half a billion dollars to go and to modernize all of the schools and, and bring them up to date earthquake-wise and all the rest of it. The opposition might be told by the general public, look, go for, go for that. We're all in favor of that. Well, now I wonder if they would be, if they knew all the details. Maybe they would find that most of that money was going into liberal school districts. Maybe they would find the B.C. Teachers Federation didn't like the way they were going to spend the money. Maybe they'd find the B.C. School Trustees didn't like the way they were going to spend the money. There might be, in this lovely announcement, there might be 10 or 15 or 20 terrible things about it. Maybe they'd find out that a disproportionate amount of the money was going to private schools. So all of these things are potential problems inside a wonderful-sounding bill, which means that the opposition always opposes, as Churchill said. Now, the example that's causing uh, Horgan trouble is, of course, LNG. Uh, He announced that they were supporting LNG, couldn't be against everything, so they were supporting it. What does that mean? That means right from the beginning, they've got to support fracking all of a sudden. They've got to support the water that gets uh, mucked up by it. They've got to support the methane gas that goes into the atmosphere because of it. They've got to support the transportation of it, whether it's dangerous or not. They've got to support the conversion of it into LNG, no matter what the dangers may be. They've got to support the transportation of it, even though that may be a bad idea, blah, 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 on and on and on. In other words, in for a penny, they're in for a pound. You can't say I'm in favor of LNG, except you either are in favor of you or not. So he has deprived himself and the party from dealing with this. I'm getting a little long-winded here, but I'm getting to the point. That's why they're so silent right now. We've got a huge problem here, as you know, in the House Sound area. They've got one in the Sandwich area. They've got several in the north that are dealing with LNG. Nothing out of the NDP. No noise, no headlines, no stories in the TV, because Horgan won't let them argue about it. And that's why it looks so silent. Now, you wonder... Have they decided that, uh, you know, we've got nice, cushy jobs in the legislature? Why mess up a good thing? Well, I, I don't know that I'd want to say that. I, I have no idea whether that's uh, right or not. I, uh, I, I just can't understand it. That, uh, Horgan is not a dumb person. 
Uh, there's this always <clears throat> sort of business pressure, Jim. You and I have both uh, heard people say this. Oh, well, there's too much graping and bitching and belly aching. They should sit down and try to get along with one another and not have all these arguments and scraps and so on and so forth. People who see that simply do not understand the system. And I ask those people to look to their local curling club or golf club or whatever it may be and the squawking that goes on in meetings there because they don't like this part of that part until they solve it, until they come to a conclusion after the negatives and the positives have balanced themselves out. It's the same thing, only more so in a parliament. The only way you can achieve anything that is at all satisfactory is for it to be argued out fully. And uh, this is what's happened with, I don't know why Horgan doesn't understand that. It's not complicated. Uh, the remark by uh, Lord Randolph Churchill wasn't an idle throwaway remark. It's a basic tenet of parliamentary law. He doesn't seem to understand that. And the liberals are getting away with murder because of that. Well, I wonder why, you know, somebody hasn't pointed out the reason the NDP lost the last election was Adrian Dix decided, I'm just going to be a nice guy. I'm not going to point out all the scandalous things that have happened over the last 10 years of liberal rule. They should know better of all people. I mean, uh, go, going back to uh, Bob Skelly, uh, a nice guy, going back to Mike Harcourt, a nice guy, and uh, Clark wasn't a nice guy and won. Uh, Ujjal Dessange was a nice guy and got his ass kicked. They should understand that politics is not for nice guys. It, it really and truly isn't, and that's because... You've got to be tough. You've got to sometimes step on toes you don't want to step on. You somehow have to sometimes have to go down routes that you know the people aren't going to like until they fully understand it, etc., etc., etc. And uh, this is why sooner or later Mr. Trudeau is going to become a copper because the bloom will be off, uh, the honeymoon will be over. As I said in an article, pretty soon they'll start taking uh, beanies out of the jar instead of putting one in every night. And it'll it'll be a different place, and he's going to have to show his toughness. If he hasn't got it, he won't stay. If he does, he will. But that's what what is required. I mean, I served under uh, arguably one of the best premiers the province has ever had, and he was tough as nails, and we all knew it. But it worked, and it worked because he was tough. And uh, if Horgan can't understand that, he will never be a premier. If he accidentally becomes a premier. He'll never last. Well, talk about opposition. The conservatives, of course, don't have a leader right now federally. But Ronna Ambrose, who I say has the nicest hair in politics, by the way, <laughs> uh, I mean, she didn't hesitate in criticizing Trudeau's actions with immigration or the war on ISIS. I mean, she knew. I mean, he'd already had a honeymoon kind of win, a huge win, but she hasn't you know, rolled over and decided that it doesn't deserve criticism. Well, Ronna Ambrose understands the game. Uh, most of the conservatives that I've read about don't really understand the game. I believe, and this is just a guess, Jim, but I believe the conservatives are going to change the rule and allow her to run, even though she's not supposed to run because that's the basis upon which she's the interim leader. She understands what the game is all about. And, you know, we go back to what I said a moment ago. If Mr. Trudeau came into the House and said, I've got the most marvelous piece of legislation. All the kids in the world get candy canes. You've got to stand up, and you've got to question. You've got to ask the cost whether all the kids are getting it equally, whether black kids are getting fewer than white. You know, on and on it goes. If you don't do that, then you get even more screw-ups out of government than you do normally. So uh, she understands that, and I think she's doing extremely well and may upset the apple cart of their leadership hopes. Yes, and we'll talk about some liberal things that they should be worried about right after the break. Unbelievable harmonies, spectacular performance, the ultimate tribute to the Everly Brothers and Simon and Garfunkel. Bird Dog and the Vintage Electric Band, Saturday, January 9th at the Alex Goulden Hall. Buy online and save at ontourtickets.com. More and more people are looking to the Internet for intelligent, riveting, and thought-provoking interviews. To advertise on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com, call 604-699-8600, 604-699-8600. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with Rafe Mayer. Rafe, 
The president of the B.C. Liberal Party, Laura Miller, stepped down after she faced several charges in Ontario in connection with their gas plant scandal. She's charged with breach of trust, mischief, and misuse of a computer. There's an unproven allegation she had her computer-savvy boyfriend wipe out all of her emails and other connections to this supposed scandal. Now, doesn't our current premier also face investigation for not reporting or recording her emails? I'm blown away by it, Jim. I really and truly am. And, and again, I apologize to your audience because I, I know that I am an old man now and I, I shouldn't hearken back to other days. But uh, that's the experience I have is other days and reading about other politicians and understanding what parliamentary tradition was all about. And there is no question in my mind whatsoever that Christy Clark should have resigned long ago on a number of different issues. When you read the summary of, of the health department issue and uh, the uh, uh, death of Mr. McIsaac and so on, and uh, the Observer, as a matter of fact, had an article it's about six months old, but they had it in on the weekend. When you read the summary, uh, you just gasp. I mean, how on earth can those ministers, how on earth can the premier not resign under the parliamentary traditions that are pretty clear. And, uh, you know, I, it's, well, I guess now it's a new day and, uh, and people don't resign anymore. But, uh, uh, that's sad to say because the, the whole purpose of parliament is that they, the cabinet behave honorably. That's not to say well, that's not to say they don't make mistakes. Mistakes are permitted, but they behave honorably. And it isn't as if it isn't just if they are dishonorable; it's if there is a reasonable uh, accusation or supposition they may have behaved dishonorably. They have to resign until their name is cleared. Now you've got this situation in the health department, and God knows there are lots of others. I'm just picking this one out. You've got this situation in the health department where you've got at least three health ministers that are up to their eyeballs in it. You've got the premier up to his eyeballs in it. You've got the attorney general. You've got everybody imaginable in that thing. Nobody's at fault. I mean, it's amazing. Nobody has to step aside. And uh, I'm just blown away by it. And as I say, that may be my antiquity talking. Maybe things are different now, and, and maybe they should be. But it's the same with the Mount Pauly disaster. Uh, they, they fixed the investigation uh, to put people on there that weren't likely to, to uh, cause them any, any problems. Uh, when the reports did show government negligence, nobody had to resign. Uh, it's, um, it's just beyond me. It really truly is. Yeah, and, and just to update people on that, Mount Pauly was uh, mining tailings. It wasn't a pond. It was a lake. Yeah, and yeah. the dam surrounding it collapsed. And it's a miracle that nobody was killed. Well, it's one of the worst mining disasters in North American history. Yeah, of course it is. Well, uh, if you don't mind, I'll very quickly tell you a little a little personal story. Uh, when I was Minister of Consumer and Corporate Affairs, I came back from uh, an early morning squash game to see a headline in the paper saying, Minister Interferes with Rentalsman. And I thought to myself, the Rentalsman's my responsibility. Which one of my colleagues has been messing around? And I picked up on the paper. It was me that was supposed to have done it. And a judge had found that I had um, uh, meddled in a case, and the judge had blah, 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 blah. I never, anywhere near the case. I phoned up Premier Bennett, and I said, uh, Premier, there's nothing in this. I didn't do any of this, and, and uh, you know, I, I can demonstrate it. And he just said, you've got 48 hours to do it, otherwise you'll have to resign. Well, in 48 hours, it was very quickly cleared up. The judge had made a mistake. He admitted it. He rewrote his judgment, et cetera. But that was the reaction of the premier. Uh, not there, there, old chap, just ride it out. It was, no, you, you, we'll give you a reasonable time to, to clear that. If you can't do it, you're out of here. And uh, so that's why I have a lot of trouble understanding how all of those people, both public servants as well as politicians, can just skate by this health uh, situation as if nothing had happened. It's, it's just too much. Well, there's also that report about uh, children who have died while in the care oh. of the government. What, and five the fi- last year or seven, something like that? Just right, and, and the finding was the biggest problem is that the media has been reporting the child deaths. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, well, it, it, I just don't know, uh, Jim. It's, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll flatter just a little bit here, if I may. Uh, you and uh, Ian Jessup and one or two others are the 
only people in this province that are actually calling things like they are and that the people can listen to to find out what is truly happening. The rest of the media just sort of loafs along, and it's uh, uh, it's part of the problem, I think, and uh, it's it's very sad. The public don't know what's going on from day to day. The politicians know the public doesn't know, so they just sail along as if nothing's happening. Well, we have the high cost of freedom of information requests. They're not free. They charge you a fortune for it. And then when you do get the 500 pages, they're all blacked out. All redacted. I know. It's, uh, it's, it's really and truly, it's a, it's a sad situation. And, uh, I don't know what to say more than that, uh, Jim. Uh, it's, it's beyond my belief that these, uh, these things are happening. It's beyond my experience. And, uh, I think it's beyond the experience of anybody who loves Parliament, uh, has watched Parliament, has, uh, read the history of Parliament and good parliamentarians. It's just, it's just too much. It hurts a lot to be truthful. Well, before the last election, you know, it, uh, question period at the BC legislature was actually entertaining television. <laughs> there were so many scandals afoot. And then once we got into the election campaign itself, it, it was like we were talking about lightness and brightness and rainbows and, and puppy dog tails. Well, that's, that's exactly what's happened. And, uh, you know, uh, I hearken back to the day when Dave Barrett was the leader of the opposition. And, uh, by God, we had to behave ourselves in, in government because they nailed us every, every chance they had. And uh, not always fairly, I must say. At least we didn't think so, but they did. And that's how the system worked. And it made us into a better government, uh, for that. I don't think that's what Dave intended to do, but I think he did. I think, for example, uh, we won a couple of elections because of the NDP holding our feet to the fire, giving us the opportunity to properly explain our, our policies or explain them better. That's just my speculation. I don't know if it's true or not. But I am telling you that that was the name of the game when we were there. We had the press gallery full of people like Marjorie Nichols and Alan Fotheringham and Jack Webster and so on, waiting to pounce on every word. We had the best opposition I think the province has had for years on the other side, just waiting for a slip up, and I think it made better government. That's how the government, that's how the overall government of the province is supposed to work. Have you thought anything about uh, BC's taxation policies and how fair they are? I haven't really, you know, to be truthful. I, uh, I can only just generalize. I mean, first of all, our share of the income taxes, is, uh, is relatively small to the overall amount. Uh, I've never been very happy with a sales tax. Uh, I think it's unfair to, to hit somebody who's, uh, uh, who's, uh, poor, uh, as well, same as you hit, uh, the rich. But, uh, to be honest with you, uh, I guess because I'm pretty stupid about money matters, uh, otherwise I'd be rich. I haven't thought about that as much as I should. Rafe, thank you very much for chatting with us. Jim, it's always a pleasure. And have a very happy New Year. Same to you, my friend, and to yours. My guest has been Rafe Mayer, former B.C. Cabinet Minister and Canada's longest-running number one radio talk show host. You're listening to The Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our popular YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Comments about the show can be emailed to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.